So the Washington football team currently has one active player from HBCU on the roster. Um, Danny Johnson, defensive back out of Southern University. Very, you know, young, excited guy to make a name for himself in the league. Um, what do you think can be done for to provide more opportunities of exposure for the next black college athlete? Mm, it's a good, I mean, we have a legacy here at the Washington football team of HBCU athletes. Mm -hmm not just excelling, but, you know, transforming the landscape of football itself. You know, Doug Williams is still here in the building, you know, mm -hmm. you know and um, you know, there's a legacy here of understanding that great talent can come from all sources and most certainly from historically black colleges and universities. Um, you know, that said, I think the fact that we, we have a guy on the squad now um, opens the door for more, right? That's typically mm -hmm. how it works. You know, yep. the scouting department goes one place, they go to a source, they get great talent. And next thing you know, they're looking back there because they had a great experience. There's probably something that can be done systematically, all of that stuff. I don't know though, because I'm not on the football side, you know, yep. those are Coach Rivera's decisions. Um, but I'm happy that we do have Danny on the squad. And, and more so, I, I'm, you know, I just want to espouse something important about HBCUs beyond athletics. And that's that if you attend a historically black, a black person who attends a historically black college is 30% more likely to graduate than they do if they wow. attend a PWI, predominantly white institution. You know, those are facts. I know, Negro College funded that research. Um, and for me, as someone who values and understands the value empirically of a black person with a degree in the marketplace, what that means for social elevation, what that means for wealth generation, what that means for closing the racial wealth gap, and closing all of the systemic and, and eliminating or reducing all the systemic things related to that wealth gap, HBCUs are now more important than ever. Um, and so whatever can be done to provide resources to HBCUs, whether it's sports programs or you know, academic infrastructure or you know, unrestricted funds so that they can become financially stable, it is the right time to support HBCUs at a time when black talent needs it more than ever. For sure, and even just as simple as Chris Paul wearing different shoes um, to his playoff games. Like, it's just the little things that, you know, build up to, you know, the larger things. So and you had a big move recently where, uh, gosh, I'm forgetting the kid's name, who uh, was a top five basketball recruit. Oh, before, and, yeah. Yeah, who committed to Howard, right? Like, mm -hmm. that is a substantial step. Um, yeah. That is a substantial step. And hopefully that pays dividends that becomes a, you know, a funnel of talent to mm -hmm. black colleges especially coming from someone so young, because I know when I was in high school, I was not thinking, you know, long term enough to be like, I can, you know, make a whole movement and make a change just where I decided to go to school. I was like, you know, I'm going down the road. I, you know, go you know, of, all my, of my friend circle, I think 80% of us went to historically black colleges and universities. And I'm one of the ones who didn't because of athletics. Mm -hmm. It would be great if folks didn't have to make that trade-off or didn't feel yeah. like they could make that trade-off. And I think Bakori has really pioneered the way and showed, uh, you know, a level of resolve and confidence in himself, yeah. first and foremost, to make that decision. I wish I would have had that sort of gumption when I was coming through. Yeah, well, we're definitely glad he had it and I can't wait to see what he does with it. Mm -hmm. um, lastly, you talked a lot about, you know, legacy. What, give me two bold bold words now two bold words that you want people to remember you by in your position with the washington football team mm. um i'm gonna i'm gonna ditch the two words i can't think of two <laughs> um i want people to to think he stood on the shoulders of giants because i want them to recognize so many people paved the way here mm -hmm. You know, there are two other senior black sports executives in basketball, and there are many folks that, you know, pushed and, mm -hmm. pro and poked on this glass ceiling in football and allowed me to step through very seamlessly. So I would want people to say he stood on the shoulders of giants um, and, and he made good on the promise, you know, and he made good on the promise. And if people can say those two things about me, I'll be very happy. Okay. Well, we're definitely wishing you the best of luck. No um, training camp is coming to an end soon. 53 man comes out on Saturday. The season is going to be here before we know it. So good luck to you. Um, like you said, a very challenging time, but very important time. So keep your head on straight and you got it. Thank you. I take that. I receive all that. <laughs> Thank you so much. All right. Bye now.